Just in hope he's right again. Sorry, I haven't been up for very long. Um, so I'm coming into the day fresh as a newborn daisy child. Uh, like and subscribe. Today I'm talking about Bring Me the Horizon. Um, don't know much about Bring Me the Horizon, so I've got some facts here that I'm going to read for you. Um, I know somebody who really likes them, uh, who is a twat, <laughs> an actual twat. Um, but I'm not going to let that colour my um, view of this particular song. So the song is called Die For You. First thing I notice is, is that it's spelled D-I-D-I-D-I-E, the way you'd expect die to be spelled, then a four, the number four, and a U. Like the Prince song, I Would Die For You. Um, I would die for you from the Purple Rain soundtrack. Um, but they've cleverly condensed it all into one one word. So when you actually look at it, it sort of looks dieu, 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 dieu. Like adieu, the French word for farewell. I think it's French. Or Flemish or something. So it's kind of like a goodbye, but also I would die for you. It's clever stuff. If you put the four at the beginning, it would really look like adieu, wouldn't it? But they didn't do that because that would say four die you. Make even less sense. Number one in the UK rock and metal chart. Uh, number 11 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Songs chart. That's a really good result, I think. Assuming Mainstream Rock Songs chart is... Well, I don't know what that means, really. I don't think I still don't understand the American way of having a million different charts. Um, anyway, the band themselves are a British rock band formed in Sheffield, which is uh, South Yorkshire, I think, making them a northern band. And you know my view on that. If you're from the up north, then you're more important than everyone else, somehow. Um, formed in 2004, they are signed to RCA Records, one of my favourite labels. And Columbia Records, another great label. The style of their early work <laughs> has been described primarily as deathcore. That's what I would have said as well. Um, but they've started to adopt a more electric style of metalcore. Yeah, because metalcore is definitely a bit more electro than deathcore. But still, you know, essentially maintaining the core, which is important, I think. They have received four Kerrang Awards, like The Darkness, actually, including two for Best British Band and one for Best Live Band. I don't know what the other one was, best t-shirt shop, <laughs> I don't know, have been, and have been nominated for two Grammy Awards. Um, I looked at the video, and um, I think the main, the main singer man, Ollie Sykes, really Yorkshire sounding name actually when you think about it, um, he looks really stylish, he's kind of wearing a bolero jacket and some of those sort of puffy trousers that people used to wear in the 20s when they were playing croquet. But all in black, you know? It's t terrifying. He's got lots of tattoos on his neck. I mean, you know what the guy looks like, probably. Um, let's have a listen to the song. It has some sort of ambient kind of singing stuff at the beginning with echo on it. It sounds a little bit like Enigma, Return to I Innocence. You half expect the drum beat to come and go, boof, 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 hey, hey, that kind of stuff. It's not that. You know that I died for, I cry for, you know that I died for, I cry for. Ooh. Nice little bit of falsetto. That, my friends, is the melody created by a deathcore band. <laughs> it's a, yes, it sounds like pop music. You know that I cry for, I including all of these sort of intermittent breaths. You, you know that I died for, I died for. I'm not sure why he's doing that rolling. Sounds like he's doing like a foreign accent while singing. It's in B minor. Well, there's the wow, there's the death court. It takes your face off <laughs> when he comes in and he starts going. Wah! I mean, it's, wah. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I, I mean, you, you hear these dropouts before the the main event, and you think, oh, I'll just go about my. And then it just shocks you. It's just amazing. Brilliant bit of production. Comes in louder than ever. 
Uh, yeah, there's guitars in there. I mean, I've, I've listened to a few things in the course of uh, analysing new music, and, and you hear that sort of... Um, you know, the guitars are super saturated. They're not that high in the mix. I mean, it's very, it's actually quite drums heavy in terms of the production. And there's a lot of sims going, um, you know, continuing the, the sort of melodic motif that he sang in the uh, quieter introduction thing. It's another song that starts off with the chorus, like, um, your love is like bad medicine. Every Bon Jovi song that was a hit. Not the album's tracks, because, uh, you know, nobody knows how they Keep holding my breath for a miracle. Keep holding my breath for a miracle. If I had to guess, I'd say it's going to go. Hoping, hoping the hole in my heart would heal somehow. Oh, there's some swearing coming. Hang on. Yeah, that was nearly right. Everything I hate, I wish I could escape. Oh, and there the motif comes at the end of the fucking verse. Everything I hate, wish I could escape. Hmm, okay, so what this is, is a really clever little bit of pop writing. It's pop. This is pop music with, a, you know, tattoos and baggy trousers and stuff, and apart from the other guys in the band who are wearing very tight trousers. Their silhouette is spidery and his is deliberately flowing. It's a brilliant bit of styling, actually, when you look at the way they present themselves. It's aesthetically quite, quite well um, choreographed, as it were. They're not the Spice Girls. They're all the, the guys in the background, spider, spider folk, spidery, fin-legged, <laughs> fin-legged spider people. I don't want to say spider men. I'm not talking about the superhero. Actual spiders. Um, and then he's all like uh, the matador at the front. Um, in the video, there's all sort of uh, violence and, and vampires and things that you'd expect to see perhaps in a Rammstein video. Um, it's really well produced. Um, but it's a pop song. This is a pop band. I'm sorry to say. It. I mean, it's got guitars and stuff, which I applaud, obviously. Um, and in fact, I think after the second chorus, it may be that there's a guitar solo after an actual bridge, so there's loads of... They've actually put the effort into creating a proper composition and there's some musical elements. But um, stylistically, it's pop. They have the um, one of those choruses where it goes like... Um, you know what I die for, I cry for, you know what I die for, you. You know what I die for, I cry for, you know what I So the third revolution of the thing changes a little bit and sort of takes you on a little journey and then it hits you again with the same motif that you heard in the first two so it's two two one two no one one two one yeah one one two one chorus uh, arrangement um classic it's pop music like uh, living on a prayer <laughs> oh, oh, trying to think of um something rock that but you know it's a pop song um, let's have a listen. Write your name in a heart with a with the hemorrhage. How does one write with a hemorrhage? You mean because the hemorrhage is like a bleed, isn't it? Um, but I always thought that like a hemorrhage is a bleed that occurs on the inside, isn't it? Like a brain hemorrhage or a subdermal hematoma or. But I suppose it's just because it's blood. He's writing his name. He'd write, I'd write your name in a heart with the hemorrhage. If you've got the heart, there's probably a quite a lot of blood involved anyway. That's, its only purpose is to pump the stuff around. And if he's writing on it in blood, you're not going to see it very well, are you? He's already going to have a little... But I mean, I suppose it's poetic. Got me... <laughs> it's poetic until you get to the next line. Got me so fucking close to the edge right now. He's about to lose his temper or kill himself. There's a bit of killing yourself, but still, I'd kill myself for you. Because I'm, I'm dead inside a thousand times. But still, I'd kill myself for you. I've written a few love letters in my time. I've never went that far, though. Maybe that's where they fell, why they fell on deaf eyes. Deaf eyes. That's poetry. Because <laughs> the truth of it, you could slip my wrists and I'd write your name in a heart with a hemorrhage.
got me so fucking close to the edge right now. But I know it's you I need to kick. Make me feel like shit. I don't want to die for you. Die for you. You know that I'd die for you. I'd cry for. You know that I'd die for you. He can't make up his mind if he wants to die for the person or pull out their heart and then <laughs> um, write some stuff on it in some other blood. Just blood, 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 blood! So much blood! And then in the video there's a load of blood as well. When it goes to that third part of the chorus, um, it gets a bit posher, shows a little bit of vulnerability. That's all pentatonic again, and then he goes into the harmonic minor here. That's the uh, second or ninth note in the scale, the minor scale. Uh, the rest of it's all pentatonic, which is that's all. That's all the stuff that he's operating in until he gets to that third line. Then he shows a little bit of vulnerability. Let me see my halo, even though it's painful. It's another one of those lyrics where it relies very much on the way you pronounce the word as to whether or not it works as a rhyme or a near rhyme. Halo and painful um, on paper, they're not. They don't rhyme but it's kind of almost a limerick arrangement in terms of the way that the words are structured but when he goes to the even though it's painful the painful line when he's actually kind of acknowledging that he's suffering in a vulnerable way is when he goes to the harmonic minor thing that's why I think they're quite clever pop writers really um, I think it undermines their um, you know assertion that they're metal or deathcore Metal core or deaf core? Since when has that just sounded like, you know, um, the sort of thing that you'd expect One Direction to write, but with some more guitars and stuff? And, and I've always thought that about this band, that they're very, very pop. Um, but he's a good looking boy, you know, it's like, obviously, he's an attractive man. Man boy. Boy man. Boy man. A seemingly ageless face, surrounded by all tattoos, and in this video, blood all over it. He's kept himself in shape, which is admirable, and uh, he's from up north, so, you know, that's cool. But I think the target audience probably is, you know, not me. I'm way too male and way too not 14. <laughs> and, um, you know... But I'm sure it's fun to listen to when you're um, adolescent, and that's great. You want Timbler go? Hey! Metalcore. Justin Hawkins writes again. Metalcore. Like and subscribe. Cheers.